before you go out and buy yourself a papyrus plant, I want to give you as many details as possible so that you can make an informed decision. This is a beautiful plant, but it is also a high maintenance plant. There are things you have got to know before you put this all over your yard. Today we are talking about this beautiful papyrus plant that I have here. I love this plant and I have enjoyed it for the last three years in my landscape. I like it in the garden because it provides such movement, it provides that instant tropical vibe and it is just such a fun plant to have. My name is Cynthia and I am with Bliss Home and Garden and in this channel we talk about all the things that could bring joy for you and your family at home and in their garden. You may have heard about papyrus because the Egyptians made it famous because that's how they used to make paper. The variety they would commonly use is called cypress papyrus. They would get them out of the rivers, dry them out, press them, and then weave them together to make their paper. This variety is abundant and vigorous along the Nile River in Africa, and it is considered invasive. There are 600 species and varieties in the genus. This one is actually called umbrella papyrus. Cypress alterniflorus is a sedge that is native to Australia and in the United States it does well in warm and humid environments. It's also an excellent plant if you want to use it in a pond. One of the reasons that I want to caution you about this plant is that it's actually a high maintenance plant. This is not your typical little herbaceous plant or just something that will you know die back down in the winter and come back up and it's just like a normal plant this is kind of a high maintenance plant because of its growth habit one of the ways that you could avoid issues with vigorous growers like these grasses is to pot them so you could pot them and leave them outside you can pot them and submerge them in water in ponds and that's a common practice or you could pot them and use them as house plants this is what I consider an aggressive plant. And I want to talk to you about the difference between invasive plants versus aggressive plants. I have a couple of other videos in here that talk about invasive plants. I have talked about lantana and I have talked about varieties of liriope that are invasive. This one is not invasive, okay? And there's a major difference. This plant has not been classified as invasive in my area or many other areas of the world invasive plants just take over they actually run underground like little runners they grow by rhizomes and they go underground and then they start just taking over everything else dies around it etc this is not the case with the papyrus it is not invasive so i don't want to deter you from that but it is aggressive people like me who don't care who like we get down and dirty all the time we're gonna be okay with maybe a plant like this, knowing all the things we have to know of how to maintain it so it doesn't go out of hand. If you are going to plant this in the ground, proceed with caution. You have been warned. This plant is gonna require that you maintain it every season. So probably at the beginning of the season, right after maybe the winter has passed and maybe some of the leaves have browned. So we had a freeze a couple of weeks ago and during the freeze, the temperatures went down to 24 degrees. So whenever there's a freeze, this part will actually brown up and look really ugly. This plant is nice when it's all green and beautiful and growing, but when it freezes over and it starts browning, it actually looks quite unsightly. This umbrella sedge grows well in zones 8 to 12, but it actually can survive as sometimes in zone 7 because it can go down to 10 degrees Fahrenheit. And while the roots are gonna be just fine with the frost, the tops of those leaves are going to be horrible. And so it's so ugly that you'll definitely wanna cut that off. By the way, this also happens to my lemongrass. Look how ugly that thing is. I'm making a note that for next year, if I am going to expect a freeze, I probably should just cut it all the way down to the bottom before this even happens. So you do have to trim it and maintain it. Sometimes the limbs will kind of just flop over. The really tall shoots will bend over and then they look really bad. And so also when you start cutting them, then the part that you've cut from down to the bottom will be really brown. So I go ahead and just cut it all the way down to the bottom. The biggest thing that you need to be concerned with when it comes to papyrus is the root. So the root is in a clumping form. So any of the varieties of uh, bamboos that are not invasive, because believe me, there are bamboos that are not invasive. They are aggressive. What that means is that they're growing in clumps, okay? So it's a cluster, a clump of roots, and the roots get a little bit stronger through the years. 
they keep growing outwards like this and so the root ball or the root just starts growing and growing and growing they have like little babies that are coming off of the roots on the outer part of the clump so a lot of grasses are either aggressive or invasive so you have to be careful with that that's why i make these videos so that you are informed if you think that's a good thing well make sure to like the video so it'll spread to more people this one is aggressive meaning that every year the outer part is going to grow new babies and then you can either at that point remove those new babies so it doesn't keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger which is what i like to do so that i i kind of have the same size plant that i want and i don't have anything bigger than that because if you kind of let it go over the seasons right many years it'll just get really tough to take out in front of my porch i like to maintain the plant so i like to remove the outer edges so that it stays within a manageable size every single year i like it in that area because it is such a showcase when people come through in to the porch it just looks really tropical so i definitely want to keep it that way this is what it looked like last year at its prime and it actually grew quite a bit probably up to 10 feet tall um, it was really beautiful, but now that I've trimmed it, it kind of looks lopsided and it doesn't look very filled in, but I know that with time it'll look gorgeous again and I won't have to worry about it overtaking the yard. Now on this part of the garden, I kind of left it. This is what it looks like this year, but three years ago I planted it and then it grew. That's the two years ago. Um, and then it just looked really great and kept growing taller. Well, this year I actually wanted to take it out because it already grew to eight feet and it was getting wide. Because I had let it grow for three years straight without maintenance, it had really taken hold. And what happens is those roots like intertwine and they tighten and every year it gets tighter and tighter and tighter. And that's what makes this plant so aggressive. Even though I did need some help to try to get these roots out, it was not impossible. In a couple of hours, we did get them. I mean, we did break a sweat and it was a little rough. I no lie, we had to like wiggle it and really use force to get them out, but it was not impossible. We made sure we got all the roots and we did have a lot of trash, but we potted some and also give some away to my mother who can use it in the garden in an area she won't have much trouble. They really, really like to be in swampy areas. In my area, it does fantastic because we live in one of the largest waterways of the world. And so there's a lot of swampy areas, a lot of wetlands. And so in areas like that, this is going to thrive. It is also awesome because this plant kind of cleans the soil underneath in the rivers. So this is doing a really good job of purifying the water wherever they are planted. So they like having their feet wet, their roots love to be soaking in water. The papyrus is definitely a plant that I want to keep. I mean, look how much fun this is. And if you know yourself and don't want to deal with the trouble, you can always plant it in a pot, put it inside or in a covered porch. I might just try that and give you an update later on to see how it's doing. So you're going to have to make a decision whether you want a papyrus in your landscape or not. Remember guys, you can create bliss at home and in the garden.